Talk to children. We're going to play some audio from Jason Cundy from last night's show in a minute. You, you, <laughs> you remember Jason Cundy from your days at Ipswich? Yes. Anything uh, you want to say on, on radio that he will obviously hear and you want to talk about? The way the senior pros at Ipswich were at that time to young kids would not be tolerated today. <laughs> so he would, have been, he would have been the senior pro in that scenario, right? Of course, yeah. And um, I always thought back then he's lost his marbles quite a bit. And so <laughs> after I heard these um, Van Dyke sh- shout the other day, yeah. He's definitely lost his marbles. You're a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to play. We're going to play him talking about Van Dyke in uh, just a moment. But when you say, you know, what the the older statesman did, the senior pros, that was across the board, right? To be fair, yeah, of course, that, that was, was how football yeah, was that back was, then, yeah, right? Of course, a hundred percent. He was, he was. I loved him, even though he was a senior pro. It was yeah. him, Steve Sedgley, there was Tony Mowbray, and all these senior players. I loved him. He always picked me. He, he used to take the mick out of me, but he always kind of respected me. See, I was a young lad coming through. He was probably a 16-year-old. He was the best player in the team at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it uh, doesn't say a lot about him, to be honest. But, yeah, <laughs> nah, he was he was top guy. And like I said, when I was on, I hadn't spoke to him for years. And then when I was on with uh, Jim and Simon the other day, he reached out live oh, to, nice. to, to, to Simon and... He gave me his number and I spoke to him and yeah, he's trying to get me onto his um, late night. night. Yeah, Oof. yeah. It's no point. You might as well just text both listeners. Then, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> just before before we play, I'm being unkind. Sports bar's amazing. Before we play the candy, any um, any stories that you can legally say about Jason on air that spring to mind? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. No. no. Okay. Um, like I said, I kind of when I. Like when I'm a pundit or go and do some media work, I kind of know my role in the game. So like I would never throw shots at a Steven Gerrard or a Xavi or a Skulls because you kind of know your role. So for Jason Cundy to be <laughs> throwing shot, shots Should we at... play the shot? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> play so Jason uh... Cundy was back alongside former Spurs midfielder Jeremy Hall on the Sports Bar last night. The boys were reacting to Liverpool's narrow 2-1 win over Fulham in yesterday's Carabao Cup semi-final first leg live, of course, on TalkSport. After the game... Former centre-half Jason Cundy said that the Reds defender Virgil van Dijk isn't an all-time Premier League great. He sometimes put, puts in displays where you go, that's a bit rubbish for someone. The defending is terrible. Yeah. Not, to, not only do you head the ball in a direction that you don't want to You're head not the, having van Dijk, though, are I, you? I th- personally, I think he's overrated. All right? I don't think that he's anywhere near the levels consistently of the likes of Sol Campbell, John Terry, Rio I don't. I don't think he's anywhere near that level, personally. Mm. He's had what, two good seasons. I know the injury, people will go back to the injury. There's no doubt that he's, he's top class, but I don't think he's in that. I don't think. If you put an all, all-time Premier League team together, he's not in that team. Overrated, Virgil van Dijk, says Jason Cundy, your former teammate. What would you say about that? Him and Alisson were the crucial signings for Liverpool to probably win the league from probably the greatest ever team assembled in the Premier League. It's been proven over the last five years. And for Liverpool to win a league title... Van Dyke was probably one of the main reasons him, Salah and Allison at the time, they were unbelievable. Um, he's an unbelievable player. He's world class. I was just speaking to Benny in the green room and I played with some great centre half. If only England had the centre halves that I was fortunate enough to play with in today's era, then I think we'd win all every tournament. So I would say Van Dyke, if he was in the England squad, even back then. He would he would be playing. Do you, do you think it's one of those where longevity people look at it and go because Rio was here his whole time and listen Rio would be number one for me. I'm pretty sure that's similar to you. Um, JT played in the Premier League at a high level for so long. Do you think people use that to kind of go? No, nah, he can't be one of the best because he's not been here that long. Yeah, you got to remember he was in a he was in a poor. Um, I'm not being disrespectful, but he was in a Southampton team, and when he was playing for Southampton, I remember watching the Man City documentary and Man City wanted him before Liverpool. Mm. So when you've got Pep wanting you and you've got Klopp wanting you and you're playing for, you're doing something amazing. So mm. when we're talking about longevity, he probably went under all our radars at Southampton because Southampton are not competing for cups and leagues. He's been, he's been sustaining it for a number of years now. And yeah, if, if you're talking about the top 10 centre-halves in Premier League history, he has to be in well, Where do you put him on that list? So I've got a few in front of me. Rio, you mentioned JT, Virgil van Dijk, company, uh, would you put Ledley King on that so list? Here's, this, this is an interesting one. Yeah. Company was like me with so many injuries. How many real 
seasons did he have for Man City playing regularly when we're talking about longevity. So mm -hmm. no one holds that against Vincent Company because the seasons when he was fit, he was instrumental. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. So are we doing it on longevity or are we doing it on prime company, prime Van Dyke, prime I, John I, Terry? I think when, when we talk, this is my view, mm. when you talk about players, are they the greatest in that given position on a pitch? I think you're talking about them in their pomp. Yeah. Right? That's, I, I think that's, that's why I still have Maradona as the, the best the player ever. in the world. If you're talking longevity, then Messi and Ronaldo and yeah. Pele succeeding. But that purple patch he had in 86 and 87 with Napoli, I've yeah. never seen anything the, like the that. Only, the only... The only time I'd question it is when you've got players like Ledley King, whose career was fraught with injuries, but everyone that I know that, that saw him and played with him and knew him, they've all told me, you know, he would have been the, one of the best England players same ever. Same with Jonathan Woodgate. Same, exactly same as Do Ledley. Do you put Woody in that list then? 100%. We're talking about a Newcastle team I played for, and we had a back four. You, we had two right backs uh, of Andy Griffin and Aaron Hughes. Hughes, he was good though, wasn't he? Yeah, he was good, but he's not. Top, top, yeah, well, world yeah, class. Yeah. And then we've got, he had, he was playing against either a Dabizaz, an Andy O'Brien, or a Titus Bramble. And then left back, we had Robbie Elliott and Olivia Bernard. And we're coming third and fourth in the league. And he's key to it all. He's just, honestly, that season, them two seasons he had at Newcastle, I was like, <laughs> you're up there with Rio the way you're wow. playing. That was so when he went to Real Madrid, it was no surprise to yeah, you, right? Yeah, 100%. And then obviously, he went there. He obviously injured himself yeah. at Newcastle. Went to Real Madrid with the injury and um, never kind of set the world alight. But that was almost like at Spurs, though, when he played alongside Ledley King with them two at centre halves only. And we were they the best. Won the, won the you, beat, you beat Chelsea. Yeah. In yeah. The cup, yeah. Yeah. If you're going to name your top three, so we can move on. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm just curious. Top three Premier League defenders, centre halves, not defenders, centre halves of all time. Who would it be? It doesn't have to be in order. Obviously, Rio, Rolls Rice. Um, Tony Adams. Um, okay. I, what was scary about the Tony Adams situation was, obviously, I just thought he was a, a diehard defender, puts his head in where it hurts. Obviously, Arsene Wenger gets him under his wing. We're playing Arsenal. Ray Parler scores a hat-trick. We, we lose 5-0, and I'm playing up front with Shearer. Tony Adams is playing one-twos running, like sucking me in and top, playing it round <laughs> me. I'm going, what is going on? <laughs> like, and obviously, when I made my England debut, he, uh, Shearer was the captain but Tony Adams was really the captain and he was so inspirational so I've got to have Tony Adams and for me it's between Van Dyke and uh, John Terry what was great about John Terry as well he wasn't blessed with pace he was probably one of the slowest centre halves I've ever come across like if he did 1v1s against him in training it was easy to get past but in a match you never see him get exposed mm. because he was such a leader and so intelligent and bringing people here and getting people in and stuff, and he was so good on the ball. People talk about John Terry, uh, Rio on the ball, John Terry's passing, mm. left foot, right foot, he was incredible. So. Just, just to add to that, and you've chosen your three, there's no mm. right or wrong, so we don't. We haven't mentioned Marcel Dissé, we haven't mentioned Yap Stam either. Should we? Are they that kind of level? Of course they are. Uh, it's just I never really got to play with those guys. Um, I know I haven't played with Van Dyke. Um but I've seen games where Shearer absolutely bullied this. I oh, I remember that game. At St. Absolutely James Park. just just held him there, like to say, "Stay there, little boy, and don't move." <laughs> <laughs> and we we're talking about Desai is like mm. this beast of a player, and there's Shearer just manhandling him all over. So that always kind of goes against him when I when I think of Desai. Okay, I remember uh, that game actually. Shearer's goal was a joke when it yeah, it's when he oh. he pinned him. Come onto his right foot and just smash one in the top corner. We're gonna we're gonna talk Newcastle in just a moment. Yeah. I noticed that when you were picking your centre arms, you didn't pick Cundy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he wouldn't be in my top three Ipswich centre arms. <laughs> I thought you'd say three hundred. Yeah. <laughs> talk Sport Drive, super opinionated sporting debate, Monday to Friday afternoon from four on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.